Dear friends of the Tom Photo channel and all new viewers, I'm sure you want your photography gear to last a long time and be in prime condition. How to ensure that bad things don't happen to your camera? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm above average paranoid when it comes to protecting photo gear. I'd like to run through the precautions I take in no particular order. Number one, protect your camera against mechanical damage. Dropping a camera onto concrete is the worst thing that can happen. This is often the end of your camera. I most urgently suggest using a camera strap. Before I do anything else, I always put the camera around my neck as the first thing when I take out the camera. Always, every time. This is my most important piece of advice. If you can install covers, plastic, rubber, leather, consider doing it. If you can attach a protective frame or a handle, perfect. Battery pack also helps to protect the camera. LCD screens often have protective covers. Make sure you have this installed. When you're not using the camera, for example, during a hike, make sure the camera is in a camera bag that is ideally soft and cushioned and over your shoulder or hanging from your back. Number two, protect your lens against mechanical damage. Likewise, the lens needs to be protected from damage. I find that lens hood is the best protection. When the lens drops, the hood helps to absorb the impact and breaks before the lens does. This is why the lens hood should be soft and made of plastic, not metal. Lens should have a cap on at all times when not in use. A really good idea is to use protective filter to cover the lens. This protects the lens against scratches but not major drops because the shattered glass will also damage the rest of the lens. After a drop the filter could be stuck because its frame is bent and removing it can additionally damage the lens. I don't take my best lenses on or cameras on motorcycle rides or skiing events. Number three, protecting lenses glass surface. If your lens is not weather resistant, you need to protect it from rain and moisture. However, what needs most protection is the glass surface of the lens. This could be a, a UV filter or just a glass filter. It's a super good idea to use a protective filter as I already mentioned earlier. When photographing in the woods, the moving branches can damage the lens. When photographing people, such as weddings, you'll have uh, champagne and pieces of cake flying in the air. Tests have shown that a high quality protective filter does not reduce your image quality. What it does more often than anything else is uh, it reduces or even eliminates the need to clean the lens surface. And this is big. The lens filter may also protect your camera sensor as the UV filter and ND filter will reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor. Number four, lens cleaning. Every time you touch your lens, you introduce micro scratches. You should always keep lens cleaning to the minimum. It's better to have a few tiny particles of dust on the lens than cleaning it before every photo shoot. For cleaning, never ever use anything else than a special cleaning cloth and do not recycle it or wash it. Buy a big cloth and cut it into small pieces. Use one piece at a time and then throw it away every single time. Before touching your lens with a cloth, use squeezable air blower to blow away any particles that can scratch the surface during cleaning. If possible, use only the air blower and don't use the cloth at all. Lenses have protective coatings that you do not want to damage. Cleaning damages it more than having some dust on it. If the lens is in a really bad situation, such as covered with oily substances, use special lens cleaning liquid to wipe it off. Always spray the liquid onto the cloth and not directly the lens. When wiping with the cloth, make very gentle round movements with your hand while moving the hand away from the center toward the edge of the lens. The sequence of events should always be air blower first, dry cloth with very, very gentle pressure second, and if this doesn't work, then the liquid. Do not use the cloth to dry off any liquid. Let it evaporate. And then give it a gentle swirl 
with uh, a dry cloth. Now the big age-old question, should you breathe on your lens to clean it? The answer I have to give you is no, because I'm recording my words right now. However, most photographers do it, and I think it can work if done right. First of all, use the air blower and dry cloth to try to remove dust. Only if this doesn't work, consider breathing on the lens. Do it very slowly and keep your mouth wide open to reduce the spit droplets from flying out. Some say that breath can damage the lens because it's acidic. This is not true. It's actually slightly basic most of the time or neutral. Rainwater is certainly more acidic. You may want to brush your teeth before lens cleaning to clean your mouth and also control the pH of your breath even better. Also, clean the outside of your lens with a cloth, especially between the moving parts if you have a zoom lens. This is where dust particles can enter the lens and eventually they will. Most older lenses have dust on the inside. Number five, changing the lens. Changing lens can cause dust to enter the camera. There are all kinds of things that can get in. Dust, pollen, rain, saliva, hair, you name it. This is why I don't like to change the lens outdoors more than I have to. My solution is to carry two camera bodies with me so that I don't have to change the lens somewhere in the forest. This is not a solution I can universally recommend though. I can just say that make sure you take care when changing lens. Get away from dust, turn your back to the wind, make sure it doesn't rain, point your camera sensor in the direction with least amount of danger when it's exposed. Number six, protecting batteries. With lithium batteries, you can uh, charge your battery when they're almost full, no harm done. When storing a lithium battery, it's better to have it fully charged. Don't charge a battery when it's very cold or when it's still very hot from recent intensive use. The best temperature for charging is room temperature. And I rotate my batteries. My batteries take turns being inside the camera. I don't use just one and have the other stored away just in case. Number seven, weather. Cameras like room temperature and uh, normal air moisture on the dry side. Moist and warm air can grow mold or algae on the camera. A lot of cameras are not weather resistant. This means that they don't like rain. Most digital cameras do not like freezing temperatures. When using your camera in cold weather, let it sweat indoors before you can use it. Let it go to room temperature slowly. Do not warm it up too fast. It's a better idea to put it in a cold place first or leave it inside of a closed photo bag to ensure that the temperature does not increase too fast. Sudden temperature changes are not good for precision instruments. It's more okay to use a warm camera in a cold situation than the other way around. When your camera warms up indoors after a photo shoot in the cold, you have to consider that it will condensate moisture and that moisture can also and will also enter the inside of the camera. Wiping off extra moisture with a cloth before it can enter the camera is always a good idea. Number eight, children and animals. Children and animals can damage your gear. Leaving a camera on the table or shelf is a bad idea. The best place is inside a camera bag that sits behind a closed door somewhere or inside a drawer. A camera that sits outside collects dust. Number nine, thieves. Thieves will get your camera when you lose it or leave it behind by accident, and this is obvious. They will also get it in uh, crowded places such as street or subway. Leaving a camera visible in the parked car is also asking for trouble. Consider not taking your best camera with you when you're using it in risky situations. Number 10. Over caring for your camera. As the final note and a note to myself, I mention uh, that over caring for one's camera is not a particularly sensible thing to do, especially if it gets in the way of photography. If you never use your camera because something may happen, you're not going to get any good pictures. 
then what's the point of owning that camera after all? Bad things can happen to cameras. One day something will happen. With sensible care, we can push that day into a more distant future and make sure that damage will be as small as possible. If you liked my video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd be flattered. I'll see you in my past and future videos. Happy photography. Have a great day.